The Ryzen 9 9950X 3D is a top-tier CPU, but the wrong B850 motherboard can still mess up the experience. Not in a dramatic, it won't boot way, more like lower sustained boost, hotter VRMs, and annoying limits you only notice after you've built the whole PC. In this video, you'll see the best B850 motherboards for the 9950X 3D across the value and premium tiers, plus the best alternatives for smaller cases and special use cases. So you can pick the board that actually matches how you use your system. And you're not chasing more FPS from a motherboard, you're choosing stable power delivery, smart storage layout, and ports you'll use every week, because those are what make a flagship build feel consistently fast. Now let's start with the value tier first. In the sane money high-end CPU tier, you're usually comparing boards like MSI's Mag B850 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi, Gigabyte's B850 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7, and the more rugged set and forget style boards like the Asus Tough B850 options. On paper, a lot of these look similar, DDR5 support, PCIe Gen 5 somewhere on the board, and Wi-Fi 7 on many models. The real separation is power delivery, storage layout, and networking, because those are the parts you actually feel over years of use. Now, for a 9950X3D specifically, you want a board that stays stable when the CPU is boosting hard in games, and also doesn't get weird during long all-core work like rendering, compiling, or heavy multitasking. This is where the Tomahawk Max stands out as the practical option. It's built around the idea of electrical stability and useful I.O. instead of look at me extras. It comes with a strong V-Core phase count using 80 amp stages, and it's one of the few mainstream B850 boards that also leans into faster networking instead of stopping at the usual baseline. Storage is the other reason this board makes sense. A lot of B850 boards give you one fast lane slot, and then the rest are more average. The Tomahawk Max is known for giving you a better than typical storage layout for the money, which is exactly what you want if your build is half gaming and half real work, with large projects, big game libraries, or fast scratch drives. And if you're the kind of person who upgrades SSDs over time, the layout matters more than RGB ever will. So after comparing the value tier options, the board that fits the average 9950X3D buyer best is the MSI Mag B850 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi. Pick it when you want a board that's easy to live with, stable power delivery, modern wireless, faster LAN than the basic stuff, and a storage setup that doesn't feel cut down just because you didn't buy an X870E. The main downside is simple. It's not trying to be a luxury motherboard. If you're buying mainly for premium audio sections, maximum USB bandwidth, or a show build aesthetic, you'll find boards that look fancier. Before moving on, here are the best alternates if your case or use case is different. If you want a cleaner build experience and a more finished look without jumping to premium pricing, Gigabyte's B850 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 is the kind of board that often makes sense, especially for standard ATX mid-towers. If you're going micro ATX, look at boards like MSI's B850M Mortar Wi-Fi class options. It's compact, practical, and built to handle any CPU instead of acting like a budget compromise. If you want true mini ITX value, ASRock B850i Lightning Wi-Fi is the one that keeps showing up for a reason. It's positioned as a lower cost B850 ITX option, but you still get the core platform basics, including PCIe 5.0 for an SSD and Wi-Fi 6E rather than the newest Wi-Fi 7. That trade-off is exactly why it lands in value ITX. It's great when you want small form factor without paying premium SFF prices, but you're accepting that you won't get the newest wireless or the most loaded rear I.O. Next up is the tier you choose when you're paying for specific premium features, not just a nicer looking heatsink. At the premium end of B850, you're mainly comparing boards like the Asus ROG Strix B850e, higher end gigabyte boards like the B850AI Top, and sometimes the almost premium Strix variants that sit just below the E model. These boards aren't about more FPS in gaming, your 9950X3D will already do that. They're about better external connectivity, more storage flexibility, and special features like high-end networking. 
Here's the decision that actually matters. Do you need USB 4? If you use fast external NVMe drives, docks, capture devices, or you do creator work where external storage is part of your daily routine, USB 4 is the kind of feature you'll notice every week. And that's why the ROG Strix B850E earns the premium pick, because USB 4 is one of the clearest, most practical premium upgrades you can get on a B850, and Asus lists USB 4 support directly on the product page for this board. So after comparing premium tier options, the premium choice that makes the most sense for a lot of high-end builders is the Asus ROG Strix B850E Gaming Wi-Fi, if you'll actually use what it's charging you for. The trade-offs are real, you're paying more, and if your setup is mostly gaming with internal storage, you may not feel the benefit compared to a strong value board like the Tomahawk Max. But if your workflow includes external high-speed gear, the Strix B850E is one of the B850 boards that justifies itself with a clear feature win. Now, if your premium use case is networking, not USB 4, that's where the Gigabyte B850 AI Top becomes the spotter premium buy. It comes with dual 10 gigabit ethernet, which is a big deal if you move huge files to an NAS, do shared project work, or just want workstation class LAN without add-in cards. You're not buying that board for better gaming performance, you're buying it to build a machine that behaves like a workstation on your network. And finally, if you want a premium Mini ITX with a 9950X3D, don't cheap out. That's one of the few situations where premium can actually protect your long-term stability. That's why my suggestion is the Asus ROG Strix B850i Gaming Wi-Fi.